Пожалуйста. The photos are ready. Then we start. Ladies and gentlemen, very welcome to our session now. We are very proud to have you here, but also to have you here. The room is crowded, so we think it's a large interest on um, the partner country this year at the ETB, the Maldives, the Malediven, wonderful paradise, but also a part of nature and the country was a sensitive side. And in the next 45 minutes, we like to speak about the paradise, but also the backside and what we can do to protect the wonderful country a bit more in the next 10, 20, 50 years, because the climate change is recently going up and we like to speak with you what we can do for the visitors, for the travelers, but also for your population and your country. Maybe there are some interesting concepts, maybe there are some rules that we can keep in our mind. So it's a large question how we can sustain, receive the nature, we all together, and I like to introduce our guests here at the panel session. We are very proud to have you here, Mr. Hassan. You're the Deputy Director General from the Ministry of Tourism. Yesterday, we've listened to your minister do the speech from your minister. Uh, thanks to have you here today. On the next side, I'd like to introduce Ahmed Zubair Adam. I can say Mr. Adam. Um, you are from the, I hope that that's correct now, because we had a, a small change from the executive board member, the Life Abroad Association of Maldives. Is it correct? That's correct. Yeah. Fine. And you told me before, uh, you are one of the pioneers in the tourism section in your country. So it's very interesting to speak with you what we can have for changes and what's this maybe different also in the, in the future. Mr. Afif, you are the vice chairman from the Maldives Association for Tourism Industry. And you maybe did not listen it in our prospect. It's your name. So we didn't have Abdullah Gios, we have Ibrahim Munyas. Please introduce yourself. Well, I'm standing for Mr. Abdullah Gios and I'm representing the same organization, Maldives Association of Travel Agents and Tour Operators. And I'm the Secretary General. My impression is that the sound was a bit too small. Is it also your impression? Should we speak much louder? Should we repeat it again? Oh, I can do that. Yes, okay. it's, it's a better <laughs> well, sound. Well, I'm, from, I'm representing the same association, Maldives Association of Travel Agents and Tour Operators, and I'm uh, standing in for Mr. Abdul Giaz. I'm the Secretary General of the association. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we see that your country, your wonderful paradise, has a large part at uh, the ETB this year, and we are very proud. But it's also, I talked about it, a sensitive uh, part. What is your impression? Maybe you'd like to start. What is your imp impression today? We have the second day here, and uh, I want to know a bit more from your impressions, to talk with the audience, also to talk with journalists, to talk with a lot of people uh, which you meet. What is your impression? Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much for uh, coming down here. Here's a, you know, I wasn't expecting such a good crowd here. I know Maldives is a very popular island tourism destination, and uh, we are here in ITB in a big way. We are here as a partner with ITB, so, and uh, this year we are celebrating the Visit Maldives year. So we should be here because you, in Europe, Germany is the number one tourist um, generating market for the Maldives. So we are proud to be here. We have, uh, I think if you have been in the opening ceremony, uh, we have come a, a, to showcase the Maldives, what Maldives is about, what island tourism is about, and uh, what kind of uh, you know, mm, uh, tourism we have so that there will be mutual understanding, more cultural exchanges, 
there's more learning about tourism. I think um, Germany has been uh, all the way through in the Maldives tourism for the last 44 years. We started tourism in 1972, and we are glad that we have one of the pioneers here today in the panel. And uh, I think I would like to convey our best wishes for the people of Germany uh, from the Ministry of Tourism and the people of Maldives. Thank you. Mr. Adam. Yeah, um, I think as uh, my colleague has mentioned, Germany is one of the biggest generating uh, countries. And then ITB is, um, ITB is um, one of the biggest travel uh, forums for us uh, Maldivians to do our contracts and, and meet uh, tour operators and also to see what is trending in, in, in the travel industry. Um, so it's, it's good to be here and it's good to be uh, talking about sustainable and eco uh, tourism and how uh, we'd, we'd like to go forward. Thank you very much. Mr. Fief. Yeah, I, I represent the Maldivian, uh, Maldives uh, Tourism and uh, the Tourism Association. I'm the vice president of this association. This association was formed in uh, early 80s. And as uh, some of you may not know, when uh, tourism started in the Maldives in 1972, and at that time, like I was saying just in another meeting before this, we didn't even need a passport to come to Maldives at that time. So, but as time went, regulations came, and then we, we had to find a way of making uh, uh, a private association uh, from the trader's side to work with the government to regulate things to a good way. So we formed this association of uh, tourism. And uh, since then, we have been uh, contributing a lot and giving all the advice we can to the government. And we've been working in harmony with the government and participating with them. And that is the reason why the Maldives tourism in, uh, industry is so successful, because we have been working as partners, the government and the private sector. So I'm representing uh, here as the vice chairman of this association. Thank you. Mr. Monius. Well, uh, Matato is the association that represents the local travel agents and tour operators. We have about 50 local members, uh, meaning travel agents and tour operators. And these companies are actually not huge companies. They are small and uh, medium-sized businesses, most of them are. So uh, I think not all of them can afford to go to all the exhibitions around the world. So ITB gives them a platform, an opportunity to meet uh, business partners from around the globe. And uh, we are glad to be here, and it's been very successful so far. Thank you. Mr. Afif, the economic part from the special destination Maldives is one side, but how it looks the other, the sensitive one, which we, which you like to protect in the next year. The economic side is one, to have a good business, to be a good partner for visitors, but uh, your nature is such sensitive that we think, is it such a good idea to bring all these vi visitors in your country? Yes. Uh, I think before we talk about the, uh, going into the future, I think it's good to know what happened in the past. When we opened resorts, uh, tourist resorts in the country, the ecology of uh, the country is, is very sensitive. How we got water, for instance, in the islands uh, was we used the groundwater from the, from the island. And there is a layer of, ground, of rainwater collected on a hard crust below the uh, surface and this water was used by making wells to reach the water. And in these wells, we put a bucket or something else to take the water out. And that's how we lived until 1972. So we used this water. But it was uh, ecologically possible to use this water because our population was not so big. So each island could uh, could sustain by the amount of water that was inside the ground. And then with the tourism came, big numbers came, started to come in, and uh, the balance was getting lost. The ecological balance 
natural balance was being lost. Then we started to pump this water with the pump. And when we started to pump this water up, it started to smell of sulfur. And I think some of you may have been in Maldives during the times when you could have a shower with all this sulfuric uh, water. So in order to, uh, to sustain the industry for the future, we went into desalinating the salt water into using as a, as a source of water. And we left the rainwater in the ecological uh, uh, sphere to uh, serve the trees or to, for the growth of. So we, we started using desalinated water. So we are desalinating, we are taking the salt water, sending it through a membrane very far, and then we are using uh, this, the, uh, the water, fresh water comes out and we are using that, which is an expensive uh, thing to do, but we have no choice. So we do that, and that's how uh, we get water. And uh, as way back in the uh, uh, 70, late 70s, we made uh, a regulation that no f uh, shooting of fish or harpooning fish, no catching turtles. And so this was how we started the, the whole process. And now, what we do on the islands uh, is we are shredding all the, uh, all the tree waste, like cutting trees, coconut leaves falling, all these things are shredded into tiny, tiny parts, and we use them as compost. And some of our islands, <clears throat> we do that, plus we are using all the plastics are compacted. We, have, we are having, uh, we have been using immense bot uh, bottles of, uh, plastic bottle, drinking water. And this has been really bad for us because we don't know how to get rid of it. So some of the islands we have now, we have uh, made a policy, we will not use these plastic bottles, so we have imported glass bottles into the, into the islands and we uh, have uh, machines to make the water and fill the bottles and we recycle these glass bottles so that it can be used again and again and again. So imagine an island with 500 beds, tourist beds, 700 employees, the amount of bottle, drinking water bottles that go into the, it's tremendous, and we don't know where to put this. So anyway, plastics, we are compacting them with a compactor, and we are uh, taking it for recycling. We are, we, there are people in the country who buy these plastic bottles and export for recycling. So we. So that's the plastic and that's, uh, and the tree waste is now covered. Then we have the food waste from the restaurants and all this. What we do is we use a macerator where we are, uh, we are making all this food waste into almost powder and uh, taking it into the sea so the fish can have as, as food for them. And then we are sewerage is concerned. We, are, we have sewerage treatment plants where all the sewerage comes to a treatment plant and then where it is uh, serviced and then we get the gray water which is treated again and again until this can be used to, uh, to water the plants in, in the island. So we use that water for, plants, uh, for the plants. Plus, lately, now we have started to give this water because it's so clean, no smells, it's so clean, we use it to give it to the cisterns to flush in the toilets. And then this water goes back again into the sewerage system, comes back again there, so it's really using the same water. And, and then we, uh, some of the smaller islands cannot contain, use all this water because even to give plants, how much water can you give? So whatever we cannot use, we let it out into the sea. So, these are the major things that we do. So we really don't uh, throw out anything now, and we are really making use of uh, these machine machinery to uh, to save the planet, us, everybody, <laughs> our little contribution to to saving the planet and everything. Thank you. There are a lot of points. Mr. Hassan, um, one of the problems is the desalination. Um, to prepare fresh water, enough fresh water for all, for the people, but also for the, 
for the visitors, for the tourists. It's one of the largest missions. Does it work? I guess, uh, yes. I think uh, Mr. Afif explained from the first hand what they have been doing in the resort islands, which is the main uh, tourist facilities. Uh, tourist resort islands are those islands which are uninhabited islands. They were designated as tourist uh, areas, and then they have to plan it out in a way, in a fashion that is going to be sustainable environmentally, and then maintain the carrying capacity of that island. I think Afif just explained to you how the water extraction and the means, and how we have come to today's uh, you know, technology, which is helping Maldives to attain fresh water. Uh, naturally, we have very limited fresh water, uh, surrounded by a lot of water, which is salt water. So we were blessed when we had this new technology, which is supporting the tourism industry. And all the 115 tourist resort islands that we have now, they all have this desalination technology, and they are no longer using the groundwater. So that's a good thing. It's good for the environment, it's good for the plants, it's good for the nature, and then it's even, uh, I would say, probably healthier because now we have a controlled way of generating and producing the water that we need. And um, if I talk about sustainability and the driving force uh, of tourism, uh, these technologies came to the Maldives because of tourism, because it's the driving force, apart from the economics, the environmental management systems and environmental management standards that are now in the country actually has been contributed from the tourism sector. They were the pioneers that brought in the technology with the kind of investments they are making. And it's now most of the islands are uh, available with these technologies. So I would say yes, fresh water, very important. And we have a very sustainable means of obtaining that. Okay. Mr. Adam, your special personality topics are boating, fishing, but also cultural issues. What do you think about the future from and in your country? Well, Maldives is a 99% sea and it's 1,200 islands. Now, uh, boating gives uh, the people uh, a means to uh, go from island to island or from point A to point B. Uh, and so boating plays a huge part in, in the Maldives. And uh, now, from a touristic perspective, uh, a lot of tourists who come, uh, they go on the river boats and, and they, they cruise around Maldives. And uh, so boating is, is uh, one of the means of transportation in, in, in the Maldives. A lot of uh, resorts, they use boats as well for the transfer between the um, uh, from the airport to, to the resort hotel as well. Now, now culturally, the, the Maldivians have been using boats uh, from uh, the beginning of time. We, we have been using boats uh, from, made from wood, and then now we've evolved that to fiberglass. A lot of boats are being built in fiberglass as well. Uh, so the, the, the evolution process is there as well. And uh, I mean, of course, the best way is to leave the nature as it is, which is, but there's always a constraint from, from the in, uh, economic factor to uh, you know, bring a balance in, in using the natural resources that is uh, in our environment. So that is where we, the, um, we, we strike a balance. Now the river boats in, in Maldives uh, initially was made from wood and, and we were sailing without the water makers uh, with the uh, bare engines, but then the water makers came in and, and now some of the river boats, they are using energy recovery system, uh, which is uh, uh, very uh, 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 using the sun, solar systems, to, to produce solar, uh, 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 solar energy based uh, 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 water makers, uh, you know, desalinated water as well. So this is a good thing. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there, there is now, it hasn't happened, but uh, I believe in Maldives very soon they would be uh, going towards the, the uh, battery, battery powered or, or, or combined, you know, diesel uh, plus the, the uh, motor, electric motor system, where you could have a backup uh, system. Some things like this could be implemented. I think it's, it's happening in, already in Europe, 
for some of the boards and, and the transport methods are being used as a hybrid system, which can be also applied in models. This is what I see for the models boarding as well. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm very optimistic about the, because the, the tourists who come to models, they would like to see uh, the uh, environmentally friendly practices being done uh, on, on the boards. For instance, for, for, on some of the boards that I see now, they are compacting the, 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 the coke bottles and, and, and uh, they are, uh, you know, and also uh, other than that, uh, the water bottles that is given for drinking. Now instead of that, they are having filters and each tourist is given a bottle so they can fill it and, and drink it and then at the end of the tour, they are able to, uh, you know, uh, throw it off. So after seven days, they are throwing a bottle. Uh, which is uh, instead, uh, otherwise it would have been every day uh, a bottle is, you know, thrown out. So, so there is a, 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 a good side where we are focusing on the environment as well. Thank you. Mr. Afif, the climate change is the huge topic for your country, for the business, the tourism business as well. The water is still a, the huge luck, but also a danger, a dangerous thing, your hope, your master plan for the future? Yeah, I think we, uh, what we have, uh, for, for what we are doing now also is we are uh, uh, using, we are trying to use less uh, fossil fuel and we are trying to change into solar energy. And for example, what we have done now, probably the world's first resort with full solar energy. We just built it, it's working, it's uh, called Club Med Finolu, and where we have put 6,000 square meters of uh, solar energy uh, panels. Some of the panels were uh, made in Germany, the others from Italy, and we have them installed there. We work with ABB and Siemens and an Italian company who had the contract to do this, and we are using, we are some days producing about 1,000 uh, kilowatts of uh, energy from that. And we have generators for standby for a rainy day, but we are able to uh, get about 700 or 600 kilowatts daily of power where you don't. It's so funny to go into an uh, island and not hear any generation and you just, the lights are coming on, everything is happening, it's, it's a fairy tale. So we are trying to be an example to the rest of the uh, country as well. And then on other islands, what we are doing, the old islands where we have had uh, we have big capacity of generating uh, power, we are taking the major uh, uh, part of the power consumption, like the laundry in the resorts use a lot of current and a lot of electricity, like cooking. So we are taking one generator apart, we are putting solar energy just to meet maybe for the cooking purposes, for the laundry, managing the laundry, we are using that. So maybe as we get money, we will do the next generator, we will take out and put solar power to do the rest of the thing. So these are the older uh, hotels. So we are changing the older hotels as well into not only the new ones. Uh, we are using as much as possible to use solar power. And I think uh, that's a way to, but solar power, having solar power is also just not the thing. We have to learn to manage solar power. Meaning when do we use, like if you are on solar power, you use the major uh, things like ironing or drying things or dryers, these big huge washing machines. We are supposed to use, we have to use them in the daytime and uh, we can't use them in the night because the batteries that are charged from solar power will consume this uh, power very, very fast. So managing solar power is also something we are in the learning process and we are making mistakes, but we are learning. And I think one island at least it's been done. So maybe many more will follow. And uh, about the environment, the other, other thing about the environment is also we, uh, we are getting new customers now. We are having new uh, nationalities coming in. We are, we are having people coming from countries where people have never seen the sea. So when, when they come, it, it is, uh, we are making a big effort to teach them 
that not to break the corals, not to step on mm -hmm. these things because mm -hmm. we, we have to educate them and we are even having special programs where we send people to snorkel with our guides so that they know, uh, they are told, don't step on that coral, don't pull that shell out of the water or don't do this. Mm -hmm. So it, it's an ongoing process, we are educating ourselves. We are, like the European market is very much aware about all these things and they don't uh, do that sort of thing to break, to harm the environment. So we, so we are trying very much to help these people uh, to understand us as well. Let's discuss this issue a bit more with uh, Mr. Munoz. Uh, we have listened a lot about the technique, new ideas, modernization from the tourism, but Mr. Munoz, are you able to appeal uh, to your visitors that the nature is not being damaged further? Is it possible to work with them? And what is your target, how it works for you? Well, if you, if you look at our history, I mean, Maldives, we have been uh, living with the nature. Nature has been a big part of uh, the Maldives livelihood. Until tourism came, we have, we have been a fishing community. Uh, the nature has been giving us food and the means of livelihood. But I think the changes that came with, uh, you know, modern lifestyle has taken, you know, a toll on the nature as well. But then again, the tourism industry is there, and tourism industry is doing a lot of work to actually create the awareness about the environment among the communities, among the inhabited islands. We have seen some of the resorts are having their own uh, marine biologists in the island. They are helping the, the communities around those islands to, uh, to teach the school children, to teach the communities about the, the, the factors that will be harmful to the environment. And at the same time, we see some of the programs that the resorts are doing, which they incorporate the local communities. I mean, the fact is that now the Maldivians are more aware of the, the impact on the environment because of the industry, because the industry is pushing this, this idea of sustaining the environment, what we should be doing. And uh, as Amir uh, pointed out, uh, the new technologies, the new innovations in this, uh, in this industry is helping the people uh, to cope with the, with, the, with the issues that we currently have. Please tell us a bit more about the coral reefs. It's one of the sensitive points. And some inhabitants used the old coral reefs to build their houses in the past. At the moment, I think not. But what does there actually happen? Well, uh, it's a long time back, I believe. And then there is a, there's a regulation now which does not allow you, the, the use of cor corals for the, for the building purposes. And, but again, I mean, we see, this is, uh, in some of the islands, when, uh, when the development is coming, people need more space. The population is growing. These islands are so small. Uh, we have to find n new ways to actually get these islands bigger. And the region is that some of the coral reefs are being uh, sacrificed to get more space for people to live. But then again, these, these are happening only in the islands where people are living. So we have thousands of islands, and uh, there are many islands which are untouched, and uh, many coral reefs are still safe. And then again, uh, as I mentioned before, in some of the islands, especially uh, under the initiatives from the uh, resort management, there are programs to rebuild the coral reefs which are already affected. So, there are technologies, there are programs where we are actually uh, helping to, to rebuild the coral reefs which are already damaged. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hassan, let's have a look back to the Climate Change Conference 2015 in Paris. Are you satisfied with the outcome there? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, we are the you know, leading um, uh, small island nation IOCs, and uh, we have been able to negotiate. You know, we are negotiating with very big economies. Uh, they have different interests, and the small islands, uh, especially, we have been able to get you know the kind of um, uh, 
financing mechanisms the, and the possibilities. I think this is one very important aspect uh, because uh, technology needs finance. You know, it doesn't mean, you know, uh, in most of the um, environmental management, uh, we need proper uh, uh, technology and technology requires finance and then small island nations don't have that capacity within themselves to obtain the kind of finance we need. So I think there is a win, but then I, I think uh, not everything we desire we get out, uh, but then uh, COP has been successful. COP21 was very successful, I would say, especially for the small island nations. Um, uh, uh, let me say that uh, it, uh, there's very little that small island nations can do in terms of uh, emissions and, uh, you know, uh, greenhouse gas uh, contribution to uh, the warming of the climate and sea level rise. But um, apart from that, um, uh, we are more eager to see that there is technical uh, assistance that could be gained to the Maldives, uh, all small islands, um, for adaptation programs. So right now, uh, I'm working with uh, one of the projects, what we call the Tourism Climate Adaptation Project, TAP. Uh, which is supporting to build the capacity within ourselves to increase the resilience of communities as well as this tourism sector. So we have been able to get the uh, global environment facility to um, get us funds for implementing some of the pilot project works as well as undertaking community resilience uh, and capacity building programs for us, which is very important because uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's very little that we can do in terms of mitigation, but rather we could do no. Uh, understand that there is climate change, which is going to be quite obvious, but we can try to uh, be prepared more and then the risk, reduce our risk because um, we are a very low island nation, um, especially Maldives, uh, less than a meter above sea level uh, average. Uh, means that any uh, small uh, contribution to the increase in sea level will be detrimental for our islands and the coral systems. So those are the kind of things that we would like to gain. And then especially I think, uh, you know, even Germany, you have so much technology there available. There's so much research. We don't have to be repeating or, you know, reinventing the wheel. It's just there, you know, if there's possibility for gaining access to those technologies, then I think it's a wonderful thing for the small islands. So you need a cooperation and a huge exactly. budget. How many you need to be more safety and maybe to have a more happier population in your country? How many you need? You told me it needs a good budget uh, to be prepared for Well, I won't be the able change. to put exactly a figure, but there are so many things. We need renewable energy for one thing. Uh, I think um, we, uh, we are right now working with uh, different uh, uh, government agencies, international agencies, to see that our, you know, we have a renewable energy plan so that we, uh, you know, these plans can be implemented. But then uh, I wouldn't be um, on top of my mind say, okay, this is exactly the figure that the Maldives needs. But I think we need very good uh, help from the developed countries uh, to see that we have a good program which is going to be beneficial for their environment, uh, which is going to be a sustainability issue for the Maldives, which will be contributing to the good practices and uh, something that will be globally important. Yeah, that, that's what I can say. Mr. Adam, when we look to the um, holiday or to the tourism in the Maldives, we have the impression that the people are uh, very welcomed in the resource, and it's maybe a small world for them. But is it possible to keep or to, to go as a visitor also in the small villages where the population from the Maldives is? And uh, that will be the one, the first question. And the other one, what do your friends, your neighbors, the residents expect from the visitors? Well, uh, yeah, uh, recently there has been a change in the, in the Maldives uh, tourism policy. Uh, and, and now one of the things which is happening in Maldives is the local villages are able to come up with uh, guest houses. So which means the 
the tourists can go and stay in, in, in these guest houses uh, as well. But uh, there is no alcohol uh, there, so uh, that, that, uh, the people who go and stay in the island villages should not be expecting the, the uh, same services or standard of services which is provided in, in the resort hotels. But, so there is a possibility to go and stay in some of the island villages now. Uh, that is possible. Now, uh, the, your second question is, uh, what would, uh, for instance, the, the locals the, the, uh, would expect from a visitor, yes. The, I mean, the Maldivians are very welcoming people. Uh, they, they are very welcoming uh, and, and they, they continue to be, uh, you know, uh, like that. And now, what I think would be is to, to respect the, the culture, you know, of, of, the, of, the, of the Maldivians. Now, that is something which, uh, and of course, uh, I think that's about it, but perhaps, to, to be uh, able to interact and also to be able to have a res, uh, respectable uh, un, uh, understanding and, and, and a relationship uh, with, with the, with the uh, visitors, yes. Mr. Hassan, there are also some sensitive points in the, in the last weeks or last months. Some of the journalists like to talk about criticism or about uh, environment protection, the human rights, and also, I'm sorry about the working conditions for international journalists, but also about the garbage and the narration we spoken about the desalination, the protection for the coral reefs. Is it possible, maybe not to give for all these uh, issues, all these points of interest for our audience, but is it possible to give us or our audience some answers to understand you a bit better and to create also a better contact in the next few years for the future? Because the world is round and the climate change has happened in some points of the world very sensitive. Maybe here in Berlin, in Germany, we are much more secure and we have other nature. But to understand you, also your politics, your thinking much better, um, how will be your answers? Well, uh, first of all, I'm not a politician. Um, I'm not in a position to say anything regarding the uh, possibly the, uh, the, you know, the running of the country. But then I think we have a society where, which is uh, you know, evolving, which is uh, learning, which is getting globalized. We are exposed to the, you know, the, written, the kind of systems that exist um, in the West, in, in other countries, developed countries. And as a developing country, I think we have done um, wonderful things such as, uh, you know, achieving the um, uh, Millennium Development Goals. We were one of the small countries that has achieved very good results on this. So um, uh, that is where this tourism contribution and money is going to. So that is how our economy is being functioning, to uh, put health, uh, education, and uh, development to the people. Uh, look at us in 72, we were just a fishing community. Uh, we are, uh, okay, we have connections in terms of travelers visiting, but apart from that, uh, we don't have the formal education in place. We don't have the uh, monetary and financial systems that you will find at the time in the uh, global uh, other countries, uh, developed countries. So. Um, it was only a recent phenomena. Tourism has done immensely to the development of the people, and uh, it is still continuing to do so. I think the um, exemplar uh, systems, which is democratic uh, and uh, uh, rights of, for the people and uh, good governance, this thing will come in time. And uh, uh, it is wrong, I would say, to expect that uh, very small developing nations that just emerged we just had a multi-party election in the 19, uh, 2009 only. These kind of countries to come up to the standard that you expect in the Western world. I think we are doing very good in terms of development goals. We are doing very good in terms of how we want to provide uh, best services, um, uh, such as health, 
free health, free education, uh, and uh, um, so much more, and uh, even health care for the people. And those things, um, of course, we have a gap. Uh, the gap is that the tourism sector, being a business, is in a very high level standard, which we is catering for the international global market. Unlike the local communities, just adjacent, you might find, we are a very dispersed community. If you know, there are so 1,200 or so islands, and all of them, they will not have the basic kind of uh, uh, you know, services that you uh, take for granted, maybe in the West or in the developed countries. Uh, you know, we recently only got, um, because of tourism and the development, even uh, electricity for 24 hours, uh, fresh water for 24 hours, uh, or even um, uh, primary education or secondary education, or even health care. But we have been doing that very fast. And I think Maldives is one of those very good exemplar countries which is catching up with the global standards. And I think we will never give it away, and then we will keep the values of the people at the same time move forward with the international community and work towards it to achieve what you said, the gaps that we have. And I think uh, we should expect that Maldives is a very uh, small country, small economy with limited resources, uh, has to deal with the, you know, if we are just uh, in terms of relative comparison with the kind of rights, uh, democratic principles, uh, education uh, um, rights for everyone. I think we have done wonderful. Our, um, uh, you know, comparing, we are a uh, conservative, I wouldn't say conservative, but then we are a traditional society. Uh, much of the dispersed islands around us, uh, they don't have uh, the kind of university education that you will see. But you have to come to the uh, main island, which is the capital, uh, all, all, all the campuses in the uh, regional areas to get the kind of education even. So we will have to have those resources to come up to a better uh, level and the quality of life even for the people. So uh, I, I, I would say uh, we will be continuing to progress in that direction and we will not uh, divert from that. Thank you. Mr. Adam, we have only a short time, but I'm also interested in your opinion. You are also to make us a bit more understandable for the issues which I spoke about it. Well, uh, Maldives is, is a young democracy. You know, uh, we, 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 we got the uh, democracy uh, in 2008, and, but it has also brought its uh, own problems. Now, we have a a budget deficit because of the democracy. Uh, we have a very high recurrent uh, cost uh, because a lot of uh, these recurrent expenses is to pay the civil service, the, the politicians, and so on. So we, we are learning how to manage a democratic uh, uh, process and uh, the society. Um, there is a huge burden on the businesses to pay taxes uh, to, to, to because of the budget crisis. Uh, but we, but as, as a nation, we are learning, we are uh, trying to move forward, and, and, and through that process, the, the, we have shortcomings, but I think we, we will be able to uh, learn, and, and uh, you know, wherever we, we have shortcomings, with the, with the guidance from, from other people who have already, uh, you know, gone uh, through that phase, if, if they guide us, probably we'll be able to uh, move forward. But then there's also a, a thing, you know, and one, one size does not fit every, uh, everyone, you know. It's, it's not, you cannot say this, this has worked in, for instance, in, in uh, uh, let's say, in, in uh, Sri Lanka, and it can be applied to Maldives. Now, Maldives is a unique geography. Uh, it's a unique uh, culture. So it has to be adapted to Maldives. And also there has to be a learning curve, a process where we, we, we end up being, uh, you know, where we should be. Uh, the shortcomings are there, and, and uh, perhaps uh, with the guidance of the developed nations and, and countries, we could uh, go, for, go and achieve our goals. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Mr. Afif, the pioneer from the tourism in your country, what is your wish for the future? Maybe in a short answer. My wish is to have a sustainable tourism industry and 
the, the gains from the tourism industry to be dispersed as much as possible to all the people in our country. And my wish is also for that it will always remain a country where you all will like to come in again and again so that we, we, our economy runs. You are the engine of our economy. And if you didn't come, maybe our situation will be very different also. So my wish is that you will come, you all will come again and again and contribute to the country and what we get from you to be dispersed to all the people as much as possible and uh, to be, uh, have a happy nation. Mr. Munoz, your wish for the next generations. Well, I hope I hope that the industry will continue to grow. At the same time, it will continue to empower people, the local people, the young, uh, dynamic workforce. And at the same, I would like to add uh, to one thing, actually. What has changed in the past year is that uh, the communities are becoming more educated. And we should continue to do so. I mean, once these communities get the education, get the information on sustainability, on any other things, I mean, whether it's political or social issues, we need uh, the, the power of education. So I would like to actually uh, recommend that, you know, every visitor who visits Maltese, whether you choose to stay in a resort, just make sure, you know, just try to make a, a visit a local island as part of your stay. And at the same time, please bring us books, because that's something we don't have in the islands. Our kids need to read. The, the, the school children need to read about the, you know, about the environment, about other issues. So if you can, please take books when you go. Thank you. So we will bring books, we will bring maybe more corporations, more interest for your wonderful paradise to make it secure in the next 100, 200, 500 years. We wish the best. Thank you, Thank you. for you being here. You have audience? From the audience. I think it's a bit you too late. You, you, you like raise to raise the hand. No, I would just like to know how many of you here have been in the Maldives by raising your hand. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Only f okay, so... 20, 30, 40... So everyone else has something to look forward to. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.